Okay, so we should be live at this point. So I'll get started. Okay, so hello and welcome to our What's New webinar series. Um, as previously mentioned, this is designed to summarize and take you through the changes that have been made as part of our latest release of Colleague. And in this case, that's release 24.09.02, and that was released last weekend. Um, if you do any queries, um, then please fire away with in the Q&A area um, within the Teams uh, session. If you try and keep those queries in line with the features that are being shown, that would be ideal. Uh, and the session obviously has been recorded uh, so that the subscribers of the What's New series will be sent a copy of the session afterwards um, and will also send it up onto social media as well. Um, so let's get started. So I'll close that down. So yeah, just as um, we've gone through before, with regards to the um, agenda of the session, we go through the release notes. Um, so in terms of release notes, with regards to where they are accessed, within the um, Colleague UI, you have a help section with a question mark. You click on that area um, and you'll have um, at the top of that um, help file uh, access to the release notes. The current release uh, will be top left hand side. But also, there'll be a link. The same link is available here where it says click for more information. There's also a summary video which sort of briefly summarizes the functionality as well. Uh, but if we click through into the release notes, um, what we'll do is basically work through uh, these items um, and yeah, effectively go from there. Um, so to start with, the key update that's been made is our integration with Watex. Um, Watex is a, a third party uh, solution provider to WhatsApp um, and this basically enables users to be able to um, message people um, from uh, using WhatsApp and have that sort of conversation history being tracked in colleague and visible to, uh, to all users. Uh, with regards to what's involved in doing that, um, from a, a setup perspective, it's done through a third party called the Comms Guys, um, and there's obviously details regarding to that. In fact, there's a user guide uh, which takes you through how this functionality actually works um, in in greater detail. Um, so obviously, a, a, you know, link will be provided to that um, also, and, and obviously, we recommend taking a look at that as well. That covers also things like the pricing and, and the contact info that you need to use uh, for getting in touch with those guys and the setup of it. But once it's set up in terms of how it physically works um, within a, a candidate record um, of the the message uh, drop down, you have an option called WhatX. Um, obviously, you've got SMS there as well, but what WhatX is the new option that's been added. Now, if the candidate um, or contact hasn't been added to your WhatX account yet, um, then this option will say add to WhatX and you click on that and it will upload the candidate record to your WhatX account. And when I say candidate record, what I really mean is it'll up upload the name and the mobile number of that candidate to your WhatX account. Um, and it'll also track against this record that it's been uploaded uh, and what the kind of matching WhatX ID is um, in this record. So obviously you have a link and uh, there's a synchronization that's between the two. Um, from within uh, the, the colleague perspective, the view of that, um, you've got uh, obviously, uh, the history of what's going on in, within within your WhatsApp account is obviously being um, logged as, uh, as uh, messages go back and forth. <clears throat> um, and if you're a, a non-user, you do have access to the uh, WhatsApp history um, by uh, effectively uh, clicking on that WhatsApp subscriber there. It will bring up the WhatsApp um, history and show you that uh, as a as a user so you do have that ability to be able to see the conversation history even though you know you, you don't have access to be able to perhaps send a, a whatsapp message because obviously you have to pay for whatsapp user accounts uh, with whatex um, but in terms of uh, what you would do physically if you wanted to send this person a message um, there's a, a an icon here uh, which is shown if you've got the whatex um, uh, integration enabled um, there's also an extension tool as well which is um, required uh, as part of this integration so you so you, you put you install the uh, chrome extension tool um, so it's in place it's obviously set up and linked with your account um, and then when you're on any candidates or contact records you'll have that ability to you know click on that icon it launches the whatx extension uh, and then you can send a message and that can be you know sending a message uh, free text um, or you could be sending a template 
we have a list of drop down list templates um, or if you want you could go to your conversation with that candidate uh, and obviously you can see obviously you, you can have uh, details being passed back and forth uh, with the candidate or obviously the conversation being shown within that interface um, so that's fundamentally the uh, the, the, the uh, in, in integration obviously with, with regards to what x you do have extra functionality in comparison to sms like the ability to send an attachment um and obviously the ability to use other formatting uh, which you can't do obviously in a in an sms uh, format um but yeah effectively that's the that's the functionality essentially um there uh with regards to um the what x portal so if i go to the what x portal um, obviously you sign into this account as well um, that that gives you an ability obviously to see everything um, that you've uploaded from colleague um, into Wattex um, and from here as well if you wanted to do a bulk email or sorry bulk uh, S, um, uh, WhatsApp message you could select multiple records uh, and then uh, send a message from in here get or send a template from within here so the functionality is there to do bulk sending as well uh, and obviously process messaging but the messaging is effectively done from Wessex it's not done from colleague colleague is more about uploading the the contact info to the Wattex account uh, and you've got that functionality obviously from individual records but you've also got it from a search result as well so you can bulk select a load of records right click and, and upload them to your your Wattex account and obviously they'll they'll all then go into uh, the account as you'd expect Wattex obviously has lots of other functionality um, as well um, again, if I go back to this um, integration, um, it's got things like uh, the ability to uh, use a, a landline number as the as the contact number. So it doesn't have to be your mobile number. It can be the, the company landline number of, um, is, is, a, is a useful thing. Um, you can initiate conversations with free text um, using Wattex. They've got a way around that rather than having to be a template. Um, there's obviously a, a Wattex app for users to download onto their phone. So users can send WhatsApp messages on their phone. And it, again, it'd be in tracked uh, in colleague. Um, and yeah, there's obviously other components to it as well. Shared mailboxes, automation around messaging, message scheduling, um, and uh, you know, obviously that extension tool as well. Um, so yeah, obviously if you, if you wish to um, integrate or use WhatsApp with colleague, Wattex, this Wattex extension will be our mechanism of our, our preferred, obviously, approach and what we'll recommend clients do uh, to be able to, to implement that. So that's the main um, feature of this release. Um, go back to the next one along is the uh, missing mandatory fields alert. Um, so that's where when you're creating a new record in the system, for example, if I was to create a new candidate here, um, when you are now essentially looking to create a record, if you've missed out any mandatory fields, um, obviously you previously you had this kind of red bordering that goes around the field and this, uh, this alert that says mandatory, uh, but if you're missing mandatory fields that are on different tabs, um, you can always not be quite clear on what you're missing. Now those miss missing mandatory fields will be listed um, within the um, uh, alert uh, of, of the form. So um, and that was the same for all of the kind of create new forms. Uh, they've all been updated so that you've got this ability to be able to have you know, the missing data sort of listed in front of you. So it's clear to you um, what needs to be done. Uh, that also extends further um, to the um, authorization process as well. Um, so if I was to go to uh, placement, um, as obviously as part of uh, creating an offer, there'll be that check being performed, but as part of the authorization process as well, there's mandatory fields based on the authorization process. Um, so likewise, if I was to, that's a simple sort of scenario, but like, like, likewise, if I was to miss uh, a mandatory field um, on any of these tabs, authorize, um, again, you're gonna get that same sort of um, unauthorization uh, warning about missing mandatory fields as well, um, all of them being listed there. And obviously that's that's more in, re in relation to back office. That's where, uh, that's the key sort of area where it can sometimes be quite um, a, a, a list there in terms of what's missing. So that'll all be listed to you quite comfortably now with that alert. Um, next one along is the new requirement summary report. Um, so if I go to a, if I go to my example, to an example requirement use 
this one. Um, so the requirement, I mean, essentially what we've been trying to do throughout the system is update our summary dashboards and our reporting so that we are, our, our branding is, uh, and our, our formatting is, is essentially modernized, but also using the, the, the kind of underlying uh, functionality is using the, the, a, a better sort of studio um, for reporting mechanisms. Um, so the requirement summary was still using the older style. Um, it's now been updated with um, the, the newer dashboard format. Um, and this format will you know, work as you'd expect it to really in comparison to the other ones. You can click on the detail um, for viewing uh, long listed records. Uh, you can click on the, the detail for using interviews. Um, you've got a bit of a summary there in terms of working days that pass between moving through the workflows um, and the ratios as well associated. Um, and yeah, you can obviously use parameters uh, for looking at uh, information over a particular time range. Um, so that's the update that's been made. It obviously allows for you to have a, a full overview of um, you know where things are with regards to your requirement. If, if you're obviously associated multiple um, candidates to them and need to see them at different stages, uh, you can do that quite comfortably within this area. Um, so that's the requirement summary report. Um, next one along is the payment terms. Um, so that is on a company record. Um, so effectively, what you now have is the option of obviously off the view more menu, you've got invoice and payment details. And that's, that's obviously a standard feature, but you, a new field has basically been added uh, called payment terms. Uh, and what that effectively means is um, you've got the ability to be able to specify what the, the agreed terms are that you have with this company um, in, in terms of when they're due to pay their invoice. <clears throat> and when you are making placements with this company, it will co just it always copies through all of all the invoicing details. It will copy over the payment terms as well. Uh, the payment terms uh, drop down list is a, um, a configurable uh, lookup field. So if I go to uh, again, I'll, I'll jump back. If I go to within admin, go to lookups. Um, if I type in payment, spell it properly, payment. Um, obviously, you've got different terms in here that you can uh, you can add if you want to. I'll add six weeks there. Save, um, and obviously you can you can just add in um, whatever um, payment terms you obviously have that's agreed, and that, that you're uh, you know accustomed to agreeing um, with your clients, um, and then specify that within that payment terms area uh, on the company record. Let's go back to there. See six weeks is in there now as well. So yeah, it's worth obviously um, updating your payment terms and, and utilizing that. Next one along is the placement selection screen. Um, so that's been updated. If I go to uh, placements. So before um, there was the multi-selection for term and then the type um, was just a single selection drop down, or you'd have a select all. What we've now done is made it multi-selection, um, mainly because we added a new option called non-starter, and ultimately a non-starter is where someone has, uh, you know, been placed but they didn't show up for the role. But you're still looking to keep an audit trail of that. So there's that new non-starter type, um, and it's ultimately we assume that when you're doing a placement search, you're, you're generally looking to see obviously the placements that are that are valid, that are active. Um, so we've unticked non-starter by default when you're when you're uh, doing a search, but the option is there to do that. Um, but yeah, effectively, if you wanted to look for all, um, let's say, extensions uh, for contracts that are level two uh, as this scenario, um, then obviously you can uh, do that as you could before. But now if you wanted to do extensions and placements, you can obviously do double now, uh, which is obviously a helpful um, update to that. Um, so yeah, that's the that's the update that's been made with regards to uh, placement searching. Next one along is to do with timesheets um, and importing timesheets um, specifically. So um, if I go to I'll go to the back office area, you've got a section in here called import timesheets. What we've basically added is a a, a duplication check now. Um, so if you wanted to import um, a timesheet. Um, that, that ultimately has already been registered on the system um, uh, within that kind of um, existing monthly period. 
or, or weekly period, but you wanted to add another one, add another timesheet and system in the same period, you've now got an option where you can do that. Before it would just say that you've already done that and, and it was sort of hard coded to stop duplicates from happening. Now you've got an option to bypass that if you want to. Um, so if I set that to no, um, and then if I select my example template, um, it will just bypass um, allowing you to add that timesheet. Um, so I, I could say yes to that. Whereas if I had that set to yes, uh, and I tried the same trick, um, I'd get a warning uh, that basically says, you know, that's failed because we've got an existing timesheet uh, on that placement um, where, yeah, effectively it's, um, it's got a matching uh, end date. And I've imported that uh, timesheet several times. So if I go to, it's this placement in here. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if I go to this placement uh, timesheets tab, um, you can see there I've got three timesheets um, that have been added there all within the same period because of that kind of duplication check um, uh, override that you've got there. So that's been added to import timesheets. Back to the one there, there we go. Um, next one along is um, notes. Um, so effectively we've added obviously that ability to um, set up um, Oh, sorry, we updated our notes area with uh, a CK editor um, and, and obviously changed that this this functionality a bit. Um, what we've also done is updated how you add additional notes. So at the moment, um, in, in this case, I've got six different note tab labels enabled, um, but you can have up to 10. Um, within the, if I go to the admin area, under notes, um, what you can see now is that you've got an active flag, which is the new functionality. Previously, if you wanted to add extra notes um, tabs to a to a record type, um, you had to do it in global settings, and it was it wasn't particularly user friendly. Whereas now this is a bit more cleaner. So if you wanted to, you know, activate a tab, uh, you could do so quite quite quickly by obviously going to here, setting a tab to yes, and then that will activate it uh, so that it then appears obviously within your um, within your candidate record. Um, and obviously that's the same against all entities. Um, off the back of rolling this out, it was raised that there was a few um, uh, tweaks that needed to be made to it, a few bugs spotted with it, um, and we've uh, made those updates. Uh, and I believe we're, we're deploying a, a hot fix this weekend to sort, sort it. So um, yeah, fact, that's, that's the functionality in terms of how it will, will work and how it does work. The um, use, use of the active flag will define whether or not you can activate extra tabs. And obviously you can you know pick on any uh, entities and obviously set them as you need to. Next one along is uh, searching on contacts. Um, that's, this is based on a global setting um, to, to enable it, uh, but on the basis that it's turned on, uh, when you're on the contacts tab uh, of a company, um, you now have the option of putting a search contacts option there on the, on the right hand side. Um, so this, will, this is basically searching any of the um, row data. So you could search on a, a telephone number, um, you could search on uh, a name, uh, you could search on a, um, a job title. Ultimately, it's, it will give you that ability to kind of filter a list. So if you've got hundreds of contacts against a company, it's a useful feature to turn on um, so that you can quickly uh, find people and, uh, and obviously see their information as you need to see it. Uh, in terms of how that's enabled, that's done through um, within global settings under the uh, company section, um, you've got this option here where it says show search bar on the company contacts table and that needs to be set to yes uh, for you to see that option uh, to appear there. Uh, the next one along is Apollo. Um, so yeah, so Apollo uh, is a third party data mine integration that we have in the system it basically means that when you're on either a company record or a contact record you have this option for apollo.io this is on the basis that you've um, got an apollo account um, and also that you've um, yeah you, you, you've also kind of set up the integration um, in the system uh, and that's there's a kind of a, a, a how to on how to do all that um uh, that uh, that's in our, our our help file but effectively yeah the apollo option when you're on a, a company record you can click on apollo um and then effectively hit okay there that will go away search apollo and find uh, any matching records and obviously give you any details that it's been able to find 
Um, and then you have the option obviously to update your company record with that in info. Uh, for contacts as well, if you wanted to, you could select you know, multiple contacts um, in the system and again, do an Apollo search. It will just go away, try and find those matching contacts and obviously uh, bring them back as well. Or when you're actually just physically in a contact record, uh, again, that Apollo um, option is in the uh, toolbar. Click Apollo and then you do a search and again, it goes away and search, searches and tries to find matching contacts um, for within Apollo. <clears throat> so what we had to do um, due to a, a security update that uh, Apollo were making to their API, we had to make some um, updates to our API about that. So um, those updates were made um, and that now uh, works as expected. Another point that was done was to do with the uh, candidate and contact portal. Um, so the portal continues to update um, based on feedback and, and obviously uh, use. Um, and yeah, effectively what we've done is uh, apply a series of updates um, in this area. Um, the update, um, see the, the, the functionality is there obviously to view as a contact to go in there and view timesheets that are obviously against your uh, against your account and for you to review and obviously then um, you know bulk approve and, and, and so on uh, but the option that was added um, to a colleague in this uh, latest build was to do with uh, notifications so within uh, a placement record on the portal options uh, op the option there you've got now got an option to include the place by user in notifications um, so that's basically just to say that those notifications that are triggered when the uh, contractor submits a timesheet uh, or the contact approves the timesheets or uploads, you know, uh, or there's queries back and forth, anything along those lines, any of those notifications. If you want the uh, placed by user to be informed and notified when that's happening, you've now got a way of making that happen um, by, by setting that flag to yes. Um, there's also a global setting to default that flag being yes or no as well. But um, yeah, effectively, once that's set to yes, it means that the contacts, oh, sorry, the user that made the placement will also be informed about events that are happening um, with that. It's a particular scenario that obviously comes up as in, within certain businesses. So uh, we've uh, obviously made the changes that we need to, to enable that as well now. Um, in terms of bug fixing, um, so I don't normally go through bug fixes in, in, in great detail in reality, but we did um, obviously off the back of our updates to the notes area, uh, we applied um, some bug fixing to this area, more so applied some the missing features back in basically. So within the uh, notes section, uh, there was a, a, a missing paste button, um, which we added back in. Um, there's also the image properties option so that you can double click on an image to edit it. Uh, was also enhanced um, and also when you're selecting font colors or any coloring um, there's a more colors option now that's been added it, it will pro pro previously it was like fixed whereas there's a more colors option there now which allows you to obviously select you know a specific color and, and even a you know a hex and hexadecimal uh, color um, for um, you know specific color coding that option is there now uh, as you'd expect as well so those were the kind of updates that went in um from, from above fixing perspective basically just fixing missing features um there uh, and then obviously the other features you know read through those um, as you see fit but ultimately they they generally speak for themselves so that covers the um, run through of the release in terms of what the the, the key updates as part of that build um the other functionality that's going on at the moment in terms of what's coming rather than what's part of this release uh, that's, that's just gone out in terms of what's going to be part of the next release. We're obviously working on that at the moment. Um, and there's a few features that are in progress. Um, one is to do with the um, forgotten password functionality. Um, so when you're on the uh, login page, uh, the forgotten password functionality uh, there has been updated so that um, it, it, it essentially has been enhanced to improve the issues that we've been coming up against when uh, obviously certain users are forgetting their password and then they, we sort of seem to get trapped in a loop uh, around some issues there so um, that's that's been enhanced um, to improve that problem uh, improve that um, or gives a solution to that searching over users uh, lists that's uh, one that's been updated as well uh, again, this is in, in our this is in our dev environment in our dev kit. Um, so, but it'll be part of the next build uh, when it goes out. Um, so, yeah, effectively, when you are in the search area, 
and you're clicking on lists. Let's go into the search area now. Um, based on a user group permission, there'll be the option to search over other user lists as well. Um, now that's that's been done. Um, another thing that's been done is um, uh, wildcard options as well. To be able to default the wildcard options um, has been updated so that you can define that by default um, as well. Um, updating bank details so when you edit bank details, it, it updates and, and deploys them across um, existing offers and placements um, based on a, on you asking it to do so. Uh, more portal UI updates, we continue to improve that from a candidate and contact portal perspective as well. Um, we've updated the importer uh, to allow for skills. Um, again, that'll be part of the next release. Uh, but when you're importing uh, records, there'll be uh, an ability to, to incorporate um, skills as part of the uh, spreadsheet. So it'll be allowed to import um, skill data as well. And we're working on the Outlook adding as well. We're doing some updates to the Outlook adding as well, just as a heads up on that. But as I've got uh, updates to obviously advise with regards to that, um, I'll obviously send those through. Um, but that covers the uh, what's new event. It covers also a little bit about what's coming. Um, and uh, let me just check on any questions. No, no questions. Okay, fine, brilliant. Um, thank you very much for your time. And uh, I'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.